Hey guys and welcome back to a War Thunder similar to battles tutorial with mouse. Uh, to be more precise it's mouse joystick but I'm not going to be going to those details. I'm going to try to keep the video as short as simple as I possibly can. Now the video might be quite fast paced so you might have to actually pause some parts of the video. I'll also be including timestamps in the description below to the five main parts of the video. This will be takeoff, landing, spotting, killing and also a few handy tips and tricks. Now before moving on with the tutorial, I would like to mention that Simulator Battles are one of the most complicated and complex game modes in War Thunder. It, they're not something that you can master in a matter of hours or days. It took me about two months of flying every single day, maybe one or two battles in Simulator Battles, to really get the hang of it. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible or it's difficult, I'm just saying that some hard work has to be put into it and if you're not willing to do that then maybe you should stop watching the video and just move on with arcade and realistic, otherwise you might end up being quite disappointed. Also simulator battles are not extremely rewarding when it comes to lines or experience, but they can be if you basically utilize the aircraft in their best possible way. Now one thing I might also put out here is that the majority of the video will be happening in test flights. Why? Because that's where you should be testing planes as well. There's no point in testing if you can take off and can land in an actual battle where if you die you're going to actually lose lions. Now in order to keep the video nice and short I will not be including your controls in this video. But if you click the first link in the description below or somewhere, I think anywhere on the screen right now, it will take you to a forum uh, thread and on the bottom of the forum thread you can actually download an attachment, which is my personal control setup. You want to copy it into your War Thunder folder and open it from inside War Thunder. Now what that means is that you will get the identical controls that I personally use. Now, uh, having my personal controls or identical controls might not mean that you're going to enjoy them or find them absolutely useful. Um, what I've basically done is I've taken controls from realistic battles or arcade battles and just simply modified them to suit me for flying in sim. Now, my controls are slightly different than some of yours, I'm pretty sure that's the fact, so you might have to manually change some of those uh, in the controls menu. Uh, that's why I'd recommend that you read through the forum page, you read through you know, all the different control bindings and you actually try them out uh, for yourself because I will not be going through those uh, in a separate part of the video. I'll just mention them a few times when I go through the tutorials, uh, but that's about it. So please check those out and of course change some of those if you don't uh, log them as they are. So for example, my W and S are my throttle controls. If you want those to be your elevator controls, you just simply switch them up. Now without any further ado, let's move on to the first part of the video, the uh, takeoff tutorial. Okay, so to start your takeoff in a simulated battle, what you want to first do is press I to start your engine and then accelerate gradually, so start with about 30%, your plane should start rolling forward also, uh, it will start to uh, turn towards the left or towards the right depending in which direction the propeller is spinning. And you want to correct that by using a little bit of rudder. Uh, when you feel comfortable with the direction of the aircraft, you can start accelerating uh, to something like 60% and then later on to 90 or even 100. I would recommend you don't weapon when you're taking off from an airfield. You might actually spin, your uh, spin uh, the plane out of control and you could crash upon takeoff. It has happened. Um, and uh, the plane should take off. You want to put up your flaps, put up your gear and uh, that's it. Now taking off from a carrier is a slightly more complicated thing but it follows the same principle so turn on your engine, accelerate uh, instantly to 100%, don't web and uh, you ha have to use that rudder a little bit more aggressively this time to make sure that you don't uh, clip your rings into the uh, control tower on your right. But uh, again, put up your flaps uh, and your gear immediately after taking off to prevent any kind of drag to uh, drag into the sea and uh, you're done. Okay, so landing on an airfield is not a very difficult thing to do. Now, what you have to keep in mind is that you should be touching the ground uh, with a biplane at around 150 km per hour uh, in normal propeller aircraft at about 200 and then really fast propeller driven aircraft and jets you can actually touch the ground down at about 300 km per hour. So approach the, land, uh, the uh, runway with a decently slow hour speed. You want to uh, pretty much turn 
down your throttle, put down your landing gear and your landing flaps, and just ever so slightly uh, touch with the runway. Now, some bouncing could happen. Uh, the landing gear is quite rugged, so you shouldn't worry about that. And um, again, keep in mind that you should look around for any kind of guard, ta guard towers or or tents. And again, so you can also use your rudder and your guns to help slow your plane down even further. Now landing on a carrier, again, carriers kind of make things a little bit more uh, complicated, uh, but isn't too difficult. This time I'm doing it in a C meteor, or C Jesus as we refer to them. Uh, why? Because I could, wanted to show you that you can also do this with a jet as easily as doing it with a prop. Now you want to approach the carrier, I guess I'm using a space bar here to look over the, uh, the front of the aircraft to give myself a better view. Now a little thing to keep in mind is do not use landing flaps when approaching on a landing carrier because you want to be keeping your aircraft very low. Um, so as you approach it, I guess I'm looking uh, I'm looking over the uh, the front, the hook will uh, grab the cable and uh, perfect landing. Now if you ask me, spotting is that one aspect of simulator battles that can be the most frustrating and also is the most important one. Without a good spotting, without a good eye, without finding and locating and also identifying your enemies, you just simply won't be able to get any kills. Now, spotting itself pretty much is just simply going to be trying to find that little grey pixel on your screen that could potentially be your enemy. You're going to have to, you know, climb to its altitude or, you know, catch up to the, the enemy aircraft, and then you have to identify whether that actually is a friendly or an enemy. Now, Spotting and tactics on how to actually identify aircrafts, I think there's a lot of it out there. I will also include some very simple steps in the forum page. But to make it nice and quick here, what I can say is the following. Uh, stay on the lookout for AAA, uh, because if you're near your home, or near your airfield for example, the AAA goes off, that basically means that there's an enemy aircraft somewhere in that vicinity. And vice versa, if you are flying over enemy AAA placements, and they start firing, you're actually going to be quite visible uh, to enemy aircraft, so keep that in mind. Stay on the lookout for uh, any kind of messages of players attacking AI, of players attacking other players, uh, and also of players attacking ground targets. So these are going to identify not just who your enemy is and his rough uh, you know, altitude and location, but also what they are flying, which can actually be very useful. If you know the enemy is flying a bomber, you might actually be extra careful to stay out of those uh, guns. In general, the spotting system, the way it works, might not be the most optimized one, but I would recommend that you take more and more practice. You should be pretty much dedicating the majority of your time flying in sim battles to spotting enemy aircraft. Why? If you know where the enemy is located, and I mean this at all times, you need to know where your enemy is in order to be able to, you know, perform any kind of evasive maneuvers, uh, to have any chance of attacking them with luck, which I will talk more about in the next part, and uh, most importantly, just simply so uh, that you keep yourself out of any kind of unwanted situation, because if you find yourself flying an aircraft that cannot run away and you're at low altitude, for example, you could be in some hefty trouble, because some players know how to utilize their energy, and they'll simply trap you in a position where there's nothing that you can do against them. In general, the whole spotting idea is very difficult to uh, explain, and even more difficult so to actually show uh, in an actual video. So I'm going to just simply recommend you guys uh, to um, read through, of course, the forum post. I might be including a few tips and tricks there as well. But in general, you just have to try it for yourself. This is not something that I can show you. You just simply have to, you know, go into a few battles and see how the spotting system performs. Okay, now probably for the most entertaining part, for, well, the majority of you which are expecting that I'm going to now show you how to get kills, well, I'm actually not going to. The problem is that when you're getting kills, there are several different ways that you could do it. Now, one of the things that I'm giving you uh, a tip here would be to not engage your enemies from above. Now, this might sound weird, but if it's not a bomber, you shouldn't be engaging it from above. My best recommendation is fly behind them and fly below them. You're staying in their blind spot. There's no way for them to spot you. And when you're ready, you simply just pop up, put your guns on the enemy, and just a short burst is enough to take them down. Now, 
there are a lot of different things you could play around with. For example, converging settings, you could be using smaller caliber rounds and just spraying, or using larger caliber rounds and getting close enough to the enemy plane to really inflict heavy damage. For example, this is what Eric Hartman did in his BF 109s uh, during the World War II, and he is still the best ace. And if you just follow those steps that he used, I technically do kind of do what he did. You know, you fly close to the enemy, you get close to him, and you don't need long bursts, you just need an accurate burst in a near vicinity of the enemy aircraft, and you should be guaranteed a kill. If you ask me, every single player in simulator battles, or even in realistic battles, will develop their own personal way of flying, personal way of attacking and engaging enemies. Some people prefer to do head-ons, some people don't. Some people will, you know, fight exclusively in the vertical, some people will fight exclusively in the horizontal. There's no way that I can make a tutorial that would be, you know, less than 15 or 20 minutes long by including all of this information. Now, I will be putting some, again, of these tips in the description below and also in, on the forum thread, but, like I said, you should just simply try it out for yourself. You need to fly, you need to feel the aircraft, you need to feel how it performs, and then, and only then, will you actually be effective at getting kills. And again, stay patient, you're not going to be amazing in the first few matches. Like I said, it took me two to three months of consecutive playing to really get anywhere. And, and so practice makes the best here. You're going to have to do a lot of games, you're going to have to try a lot of different things, uh, fly a lot of different planes, and um, for me, example, my favorite aircraft is the one that the majority of this video will actually be um, composed of, which is the BF-109 G2 Tropical. Uh, this plane just simply has, from my personal taste, the best combination of guns, the best, the best speed that I could get at that tier, has a decent matchmaker, and uh, it is just overall a very enjoyable plane to fly. It's stable, doesn't go into flat spins, and it feels very comfortable to fly, but maybe this is not the plane you want to fly. Maybe you're a Spitfire person, maybe you want to fly jets using this setup, maybe you want to fly biplanes. Again, uh, it is an individual's pick. It, every single person is different to the way they're going to be flying in sim battles, and that's why it's a very hard to make uh, you know, a, a united rule saying this uh, few steps are going to lead you to success. So I'm leaving this part of the tutorial kind of open uh, to you know, your own personal minds, and I think that if you do uh, get to the solution, get to the, uh, you know, the way of flying that suits you, it would actually be a lot better solution than if I just hand it to you. Because the solution that I might hand it to you is a solution that works for me. And like I said, we all fly in a different way. So as much as somebody is going to say don't do head-ons, I'm, for example, a person who loves doing head-ons. And so making a kill tutorial is a very, a very individual thing. The flat spin, arguably one of the most fearsome things that can happen in a simulator battle. Now, I'm not going to be going into the whole details why a flat spin happens or uh, anything like that. What I want to do here is just show you how to get out of it. To start off, what you want to do is you want to lower your throttle, apply rudder to the opposite direction of the spin, and apply negative elevator. Now, all you have to do is just simply wait. And just like that, the plane will level out. Now you want to center your plane, you want to put your um, throttle back up, and now you use your ailerons. Uh, a little thing to keep in mind is that when you enter a flat spin, never use your ailerons. Ailerons are off limits, don't even touch them, and you should be absolutely fine. Another thing that I can give you as a tip would be to change your tone mapping from default to Reinhardt. Uh, this will basically make the contrast uh, less strong, and it might make it easier for your eyes to find that little grey spot on the screen. Another two little tips that I could give you is that you should be trying not to find the vertical because the mouse aim has not been really optimized for that, which means that things such as the Immelman or the loop might not be the most uh, you know, cleanly made maneuvers. If you try them out for yourself you'll see that the plane actually stores out. Uh, I don't know what else I could do, but if you have any suggestions on how to, you know, set the sensitivity uh, in that way, so far I haven't managed to get that right, and I haven't seen anybody else do it. So try to find the horizontal if it's not necessary uh, to go into a vertical. And one last tip would be to try to take out aircraft that have a decent amount of ammunition and also have a medium-sized cannons. The largest cannons might be, you know, sounding to be very tempting, but 
Uh, if you can't hit the enemy with enough accuracy, then there's no point in having large cannons. Uh, if you ask me, the best cannons to take are going to be any uh, cannons of a size of maybe a 20 or a 23 millimeter. So the Russians have you covered there. Uh, but also the 50 cals can inflict serious amounts of damage. So try to play with the aircraft that have uh, enough ammunition so that you don't burn through it in a, a few bursts. Okay guys, so we've reached the end of the video. Hopefully it was informative enough and that I haven't left out any important bits. If you have any further questions, uh, please put them in the comment section below and also in the uh, War Thunder forums uh, thread that I've linked. Uh, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials or guides, uh, also please put them in the comment section below. Uh, any information that you might be looking for should be in the description below. Um, now also this video is going to be going out on the 25th of December, so Merry Christmas to you all. Uh, so hopefully this works as a little bit of a, a Christmas gift from me. But um, yeah, I enjoyed making this and I'm hoping that I'll make quite a few more in the future. But uh, until next time, have fun guys, stay flying, and uh, I'll see you around. Bye guys.